everybody. Welcome back to Recordology. Today, we are taking a look at Dynagroove, the magnificent new sound. Sorry, I'm trying to avoid the reflection there. The amazing, magnificent new sound developed by RCA Victor. Now, this record in and of itself is cool. A couple of sources online say this is 1963. It's what's called a Buick Highlighter album, which I'm guessing it's a highlighter in the sense that it's, in the sense that it's highlighting some different uh, artists, but really this is a sampler platter of Dynagroove, which at the time was new. Dating it brings me to 1963, but that seems later than 1963, that Buick. Doesn't that seem like, gosh, that, that to me that looks more like 1970, but uh, let me know. I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure you guys will verify and validate that. Essentially, we got a blurb about what Dynagroove is. I'm going to explain that in a second, but this is a cool record. This one was like a buck, 95 cents, and it's a really interesting footnote in the history of vinyl records. I'm going to kind of show you some of the covers here while I explain the essence of what Dynagroove is. So Dynagroove, not to be confused with Dynaflex, is an RCA Victor development where they took the record as we know it and added some engineering and some design work on the front end of the mastering process. The technology is all about mastering the master disc. So the record, the end format is still a record as you and I know it, fully compatible on any record player, but it was uh, the improvements were on the design, the mastering level to render better sound or so RCA Victor claimed when you play your record back. The whole thing is about making the record sound better when played back with a conical or ball stylus. So a rounded tip stylus, which is what you're gonna find on record players such as this. All of these type of you know ceramic cartridges have a conical stylus. Most Audio-Technica uh, ones do as well. Elliptical would be the variant. So if you get into like a uh, VM95E, actually that may be conical as well. But if you get into the Ortofon 2M Red, 2M Blue, higher end styli that are elliptical, you wouldn't realize the full benefit of dining group with that. It's designed for the rounded conical tip of more entry-level cartridges, both magnetic and ceramic. It doesn't have anything to do with that. But the thing is, is the tip of a conical stylus is less precise. So there is some sound that's very minute, but some very minute sound differences in playing back a record with that type of a stylus. So the dining groove process in part allowed those distortions to be compensated for. And I'll explain how they did that in a minute. So let's take a look at the record itself. You see time hasn't done nice things to this paper sleeve. This needs to be upgraded immediately. But the record itself is in pretty dang good shape and it features one of my favorite record labels, the RCA Victor red label Dynagroove. This is a mono recording. So it's not even about stereo. It's really about mastering the master disc that this is um, based on in the best way possible for the majority of photographs that were prevalent at that time in the early 60s. And that is styli and cartridges that featured a conical or round tip Stylus. Yes, this record is filthy, it needs to be cleaned, and I don't have time to do that at the moment, so we're gonna look beyond that. Um, but basically, the way the process worked, this is such a gorgeous label. They used an analog computer. You may be saying, what is an analog computer, and what could it possibly do in the early 60s? Well, an analog computer uses, you know, hydraulic pressure, uses mechanical pressure to memorize a set of pre-configured points of pressure, of measurement, et cetera, et cetera. That's a separate article uh, or separate topic to read uh, at a later time to basically configure the master record in a certain way. So when you are playing a record back with a conical stylus, 
that process introduces a certain amount of distortion. So knowing that the engineers at RCA Victor introduced pre-distortion that would be essentially canceled out by the distortion of playing back on a conical stylus. So they pre-distorted the sound so that you could essentially undistort it through the distortion process of playing a record back with a conical stylus. I know that sounds convoluted, but it's a scientific thing. Now, I will say this, there's a lot of detractors to the whole Dynagroove sound. A lot of people love it. A lot of people, even from the get-go, were like, nah, this is, this is not a good thing. We're not gonna really be able to judge it too much here with this turntable today, but we are going to uh, open the subject as it were, and down the road we'll do some direct feed sound tests and really give it a go. They also uh, essentially compressed the sound with Dynagroove by boosting the lows and compressing the highs on quieter passages. So there's a little bit of a loudness war type of effect with some compression. And when I say compression, I'm talking about like radio station compression, making the sound uh, less dynamic, making the sound more compressed into the top end of the sound spectral headroom area so that the lows weren't too drastically lower than the highs, if that makes any sense. So it's an interesting, interesting thing, but wow, I'm just noticing that this stylus is hanging in the no man zone here. Let's go ahead and listen to it. So turning on this turntable, we'll give it a little bit of a sound test. We're not gonna be able to tell a difference on this record player. But we can still listen to the music. And from a music standpoint, we've got some of the best classical artists, which shouldn't have an issue with content ID matching. Man, I love that window. That's just a beautiful, beautiful record level. One more little bit here. Listen to this. So yeah, there is the RCA Dynagroove sort of sampler record here. There are more of these, I believe, in this series. There's definitely other records that tout the benefits of the Dynagroove process. Let me know down in the comments below what your opinions are on it, if you've noticed any difference. And in the future, I'm going to do some videos, perhaps with this record or other Dynagroove records, where we really dig into it and do some direct feed sound tests and whatnot. From a pure, you know, top level position, this record is cool from the historic standpoint of having some great music. It's a great advertising piece for General Motors. And I just think that's a really cool thing. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about it. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.